Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the school. It's Thursday evening, and it's a co-host um, or facilitators, small group facilitators uh, meeting where we have the privilege of spending some time and just interpreting the teaching into some of the into some of the um, ways that we will go and facilitate it in a small group. And remember, at Father's Heart Digital Church. We always want to encourage you, and, and I want you to, to hear me properly and to hear what I say. And we want to encourage you to start a small group. Um, yes, you hear me right. Um, if you have at all the ability, the possibility, the option to have a small group, we would really like you to, to start a small group. We are not threatened. By you, um, I've heard someone talk about yes, but um, we don't. We won't allow people to have small groups as fathers our digital church um, because we we want to protect our our people in fathers our digital church. It's the furthest from the truth you can possibly have. We will encourage every person. Remember, these teachings are open to anyone anywhere in the world, not just in South Africa. And we have people on this call tonight. Um, I promise you, if I scroll through the names. I don't want to dishonor you and scroll through the names now and look at the names. But if we go look at the names, there will be people from all over the world on this call um, because that is the anointing on Father's Heart Digital Church. That's Dr. Frost's anointing, which is part of the cloak, part of the anointing um, of Father's Heart Digital Church. And I'm privileged to be a pastor of this fold and to operate and the, this anointing. And... Um, you and I, every person listening to, to the teachings, um, any of the teachings that Father, that Dr. Frost himself do, or any of the other people that he um, second to do some of the some of the teachings, like this one tonight for me, um, the key is we still operate under that anointing, and um, the the beautiful part is in that anointing we, uh, Dr. Frost and this whole team, we have an anointing of allowing people to go and operate, to go and do. Father's Heart Digital Church is a do church, and our focus and our function is to get us and get you to do, but um, that doesn't mean you have to be a member of Father's Heart Digital Church. That doesn't mean you have to be an affiliate member of Father's Heart Digital Church. It means you have to be a born-again believer, spirit-filled um, and operating and um, a follower of Christ that's what it's about and that's what we do we we teach help we we assist people to find christ for those who haven't and for those who are already in christ we just encourage we build we help and we use the the um father's heart digital church as the medium um, i mean dr frost's morning communions we don't do that under the ban banner of father's heart digital church we do it under the banner of dr frost uh, the teaching that I've just done on Facebook, it's under the banner of Dr. Arthur Frost. It's not under the banner of Father's Art Digital Church um, because we follow the anointing. And I want you to understand that. And uh, tonight I talk to people that are, that are wanting, that are eager to facilitate small groups. And it takes a special kind of people, a, a special kind of per person. My apology, them Afrikaans came through again. It takes a special kind of person to be willing to go and facilitate a small group. Because first and foremost, you open yourself. You open yourself to other people looking at you in judgment because that is what people do. Um, you open yourself for people that think they can do better than you. And um, there are loads of people that can do this better than me. Most probably half of you on the school can do this a lot better than me. But you know what? I'm privileged that Dr. Frost asked me to do this. And that's the same way that we ask you to become a, 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 a facilitator of a small group. Exactly the same way. Yes, if you're a member of Father's Art Digital Church, you operate under the anointing of, of Dr. Frost within Father's Art Digital Church. If you're not a member of Father's Art Digital Church, you should be a member somewhere. And we never, ever, ever has asked any person to leave their local church to join Father's Art Digital Church. We never, ever asked anyone from day one, from the first service, and we're still not doing it because we're not pushing for numbers. We don't have a building to fill. We don't have to have a certain number of people. 
we know exactly how many people are are members of Father's Heart and affiliate members of Father's Heart because we have the database. We know exactly where they are in the country and in the world. We know exactly where they are. But the key is, it's about you. It's about the person, whether you're a member of Father's Heart Digital Church or not. So if you're not a member of Father's Heart Digital Church, we assume, we take it for granted because you're a spiritual person following in the footsteps of Jesus Christ, you will have a local church. Because that is something that Jesus Christ has given us. And that is what we find in the New Testament. That's what we find the whole Acts is how what the local church is about and how to, to go operate the local church. And the key is we accept that you are from a local church if you're not a Father's Heart Digital Church member. And we will still encourage you and we will still help you and assist you to go and be a facilitator of a small group. Because it's not about Father's Heart Digital Church. It's not about Dr. Frost. It's about followers of Christ. It's about go, in, go impact. And tonight we had the teaching of the gifts of the Spirit, which is the actual demonstration of the power of God to the world. And we want you, we want you to, to go. We want you to go expand your horizons and to go find a few people. But remember the first thing. And we've said that many times and I've stopped the, using the PowerPoint because people were saying, but you always show us the first PowerPoint slide and exactly the same slide every week. Well, it's the most important part of this whole teaching is that to be a co-host, facilitator, to be a facilitator of a small group. Sorry, that's the right word. To be a facilitator is not a title. It is a function. It is serving. Being a small group facilitator means I will help the group to understand what we're doing in a very simple manner that any person will participate. And I will help people to understand. And I will help people to participate. And I will be the assistant. So I will be the serving person in the group. It's not a power. It's not a position. And a lot of people approach us because they want this position. It's not a, that's the bad news. It's not a position. Being a small group facilitator being whatever you call it, a cell group, a, a life group, a small group, it doesn't matter what we call it. Being a facilitator of a small group is a, the utmost servant position. It is being a servant. And that is exactly what Jesus Christ showed us. But he operates in power in being a servant. That doesn't mean you shouldn't operate in the power. We need you to operate in the power. And that's why we talk about the gifts of the spirit and then talk about uh, co-hosting a small group. The key is tonight, we talked about the you do something um, gifts. The you do something gifts. And that means it's easy. I can make the people do it. The you say something gifts that we've done last week. And you remember last week I said we start with the most difficult ones. Because it's you say. If I help someone to you say uh, uh, in the spirit, it means that I have to get them past their mind. Because they have to say something. I cannot show you something and then you do it. You have to say something. So the last week one was a difficult one. Because it's you say. I have to get you to get past your mind, your human nature. To say something. Because you have to say. I can tell you something to repeat it after me. But if you don't believe it, you will not repeat it. So it's, it's, it's one of the more difficult ones. But tonight we have an easy one. It's the, it's the easiest one of the three. Because it's you do something. Now, if you have to do something, what can I do as the co-host, as the facilitator of this group? What can I do? I can show you. And then I say, okay, now you do it. I can show you. Then I say, okay, now you, now you do it. I can show you. Okay, now you do it. Because there's no right or wrong. It's just I have to step in faith. And I need to make sure that I'm not the most important person in the room. And how do we do it? In a small group, we start Praying for the people in the group. Simple. And that's what we do on a Wednesday evening. And I know I sound like a broken, broken whatever, because I always back a, a broken um, gramophone. Um, the, the key is I'm always back at the same things. Because on a Wednesday evening, we give you the opportunity to come do all the you say something stuff, the difficult stuff. You can come and do it because we teach on a subject. Now you can come say what you think about the subject. 
Now we get to the you do stuff. What do we do on a Wednesday evening? We do the you do stuff. Why? Because we get people to talk about the topic. Then we ask people to start and, and talk to the, to the people around them and share with them their prayer requests. That's where you, you, you do stuff start. I have to make note. I have to take cognizance of the Holy Spirit. Which of these prayer requests will he lay on my heart? Because the Holy Spirit will. Some of those prayer requests will just go past you because it's not where you operate. It's not who you are. It's not where you're at. And um, the key is, um, I see someone is asking if I'm recording. I am busy recording. Thank you for covering me. But fortunately, I've done. I've pressed the button. It is recording. Um, the, the, the key is, the, the you do something. All I have to do is I have to get the people to do. In a small group, I have to get the people to do. So how do we do it? We have certain ground rules in the small group. We have ground rules in the small group. Remember, in a small group, if you're the facilitator, there's always ground rules. And it's not to have walk around with a ruler and see who must get uh, hit on the knuckles. There are some ground rules. Certain things we do, yes, certain things we don't. And... Um, we lay down the ground rules and then we say, but we are going to operate in, in the gifts of the Spirit. So if anyone in this group, part of what they say is, I'm sick. I don't feel well. My husband is sick. My wife is sick. My child is sick. My mother is sick. My mother-in-law is sick. It doesn't matter who it is. What do we do? We, we take the gifts of power, the do gifts, and we do. And we just pray. And we get everyone to pray. And if you, as the co-host, will immediately act and do one of the do gifts, the people will see, but this is, how it, this is how it works. This is what happens. If you pray in your group, you have to pray. You have to use the, you say, gifts. You have to pray in your time. And remember, if there's people in the group, like we said last week, who's not praying in their tongue yet, they, they knew, you're still finding them, you don't know where they're yet. Don't scare them away by starting on a rant and go on a five to ten minute pray in the tongues. Allow them. Allow the grace. A small group leader will always have the grace for the newbie, for the new person in the group. Where I don't know, I haven't, I, I don't know the measure of faith. I don't know the level of faith. I don't know the measure of faith. I don't know how they operate in the gifts. I don't know that yet. I need to give some time. I don't need to shine. I don't need to be on the pedestal. I don't need to use all the big words. I don't need to use everything tonight to show who I am. Be a servant, because that's what a co-host is. Be a servant. Make things simple. So how do we go about with the, with the do gifts in a small group? First and foremost, we act on everything that someone say. If someone, any person in the group, say something that needs prayer, we pray. And everyone prays. We start to just pray. And sometimes you just pray one sentence and you shut up and you wait for someone else to pray. And you just wait for someone else to pray. And you know what? Silence will cause someone else to pray and the Holy Spirit. And eventually this group, this team will learn that, you know what? The Holy Spirit must be, yeah, the Holy Spirit must be the one guiding us. So when we pray for something, I will start. You then continue. You continue. And the Spirit will just start working. And there will be a flow and we will take a flow and, and this whole prayer will take on a flow by the spirit to where that prayer should go to and not led by a person doing a serious prayer and trying to catch everything from 1914's big, big flu up until today. Um, it's the key to allow every person. If I am the co-host, uh, the facilitator of the group, the you say gifts, I should allow the team to say. The you do gifts, I should allow the team to, go, to do. I'm not the one doing everything. Otherwise, how will I empower them? Remember, the gifts of the Spirit is there for one reason, and that is to help us to demonstrate the power of God to the people around us every day on a daily basis. And that's why people will say, you know what, that person operates in a different level of, of faith. He's in a different spiritual level. He's, he's one of those people that, why? All we do is we use the say, the say gifts, the gifts of utterance. When, when we need to talk, we talk. When we don't need to talk, we don't talk. 
we we need we use the gifts of power when we need the gifts of power we do and we do use them and next week we will add the gifts of revelation I want you to, and I trust by now you heard me, and I should actually just shut up myself. The key is, in a small group, facilitating a small group, is not to sound as if you're on your soapbox every day. Yes, you have to prepare. We've been through all of that. You have to prepare. The Holy Spirit cannot change what you should bring as a word for the night if you haven't prepared a word. You have to prepare. You have to, become, you have to come prepared. But now, as I come prepared, I have to, to plug in to the Holy Spirit, if I can use that analogy, I have to make sure that the Holy Spirit is operating so that I have grace for everyone in this group to operate with their gifts. When I pray not to do the prayer and the perfect prayer and get everyone to know that this is going to be seven minutes. If he starts praying, it's going to be seven minutes. We're going to be here for seven minutes and after seven minutes, we're going to do that because then they don't hear anything you pray. It's to allow everyone to pray. Lord, I just prayed tonight for this. And then you, you quiet so that the other person, other person in the group should pray and get them to start praying. And at some point, you, you just start praying in tongues. At some point, you just start going back at to in, in your language, Afrikaans or English, and you just pray a word or two and you just get them to go to a specific, to a specific area. And you just guide the prayer and we use the gifts of utterance. We use the gifts of do by, by operating in the spirit. And we allow the people to see the flow because it is a flow. And then we go over to the teaching. Once we go over to the teaching, we do the teaching for the evening, whatever the teaching is. And whatever comes out of that teaching that is part of the gifts of the Spirit, we just operate in that. We just operate in that. We allow the, the people to operate in that. And that is how we get a small group to function in the Spirit. People will will come to you and say, you have to go to that small group because they operate in the spirit. What's the discerning factor? The, the facilitator just allowed everyone in the group to come with their gifts of the spirit and to operate. Therein lies the power. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, beloved of Christ, I trust that you heard me by now. If you want to be a facilitator of a small group, the power is to unlock the gifts of the Spirit for every person so that they can operate around you, with you, in the, as a team. And as you awaken them, a new person will come in. And that night will be a, a bit quieter than the other nights. We will operate. We will help and assist that person to, to softly and with a soft landing come into our group without showing them a level of faith that they will never, ever understand in their first night. We're not trying to impress them. We just allow them to graciously come into our group to find acceptance to be back next week. And next week we operate just one level. We go one level harder. And the week after that we go full blast. But now they're there. They're part of the, they're part of the team. They found the spirit. They're part of the spirit. And, and we operate. And we don't try and when someone new coming to that night to show them all our gifts. We just slowly operate, allow them to be in, allow them to be safe, but allow the team to operate in the spirit, allow the team to operate in the gifts and not just the facilitator. If you want to, um, if you want to, um, to uh, be a good facilitator, make sure that you allow the people in the group to to do. I see someone asked me to read the summary statement. Gunther, I assume you have a book and um, the summary statement um, in the book, um, I've read it earlier, but I, I didn't read it word for word. I've just um, incorporated it into my teaching. But the summary statement for um, this teaching in the book, and remember, we talk about the, yes, I do use the book. Um, we talk about the summary statement in, in the book. It, um, it talks about the, often the, um, let me read the words as I, as I told um, Gunther that I will read the words. So sorry, Gunther. Often a combination of two or three gifts operate together to perform a miracle. To raise the dead, you need the gift of faith. This is above normal faith. The gift of faith, remember? We talked about the gift of faith. 
the work of miracles, the working of miracles, this is a creative miracle because we want to raise someone from the dead. We have to recreate his lungs to operate, his heart to operate, everything to operate. The gift of healing is to heal what caused the death of the person in the first place. So seek the spiritual gifts. And I've read that, um, which is not written in the book, but I've read that um, uh, verse in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. And you and I should pursue love in our small group. And we should desire spiritual gifts. But the key is a facilitator will allow every person in the group to slowly but surely start operating in these gifts so that we see the gifts as demonstration to the world, so that we see these gifts on demonstration. So everyone, any one of the gents should rock up to this uh, meeting with their underpants over their long pants so that they look like super superheroes and that the ladies should each have a cape so that we arrive there and know that we're going to be superheroes tonight because we are superheroes. Ladies and gentlemen, you are a superhero for this world. If you follow Christ, if you operate in the gifts, you will demonstrate to them the power of God. They cannot be a superhero with more power than that. They cannot be a superhero with more power than that. You and I demonstrating to people the power of God. Lord, we just thank you for the privilege that you has given us the ability, the, the will, the, the faith to pursue the desire of spiritual gifts. Lord, because in there is the power. Lord, in there is the power. Lord, in there is the power. Lord, we want to come talk against people that say that the church is, is powerless. Because power is not in the performance. Power is in the demonstration of your gifts, Lord. And we have the opportunity, the ability, the, the spiritual input to go put your gifts on display for everyone to see. Because your power in these gifts, Lord, is not about us. It's all about you. We thank you that we can be busy with this teaching, that we can see that we can go and display your gifts, your power, to the world as a physical demonstration for them to be in awe of what you can do. Lord, nothing, nothing about us, all about you. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for being the indwelling Christ, empowering us, assisting us to go and step up in power. We thank you for that. Lord, we want to honor your name, and we say that in Jesus' name. Amen. It's an absolute privilege to be with you tonight. And to talk about this one, and I trust that you heard that I, I had some energy on this topic because it's such an important topic. If you want to be a co-host, if you, if you go and have a group of people, start operating in the gifts. Start getting them to see the power of God on display and um, allow them to go and duplicate that because in there is the gift that God, that God wants you to go and give the people around you. I bless you. Have a good evening. Thank you for, for being with us tonight.